on this episode of Carnage, we're modifying the Mazda to go eight. Lighter, faster, stronger. So we're back onto the Mazda, and I know a lot of people are wondering why we're bouncing from car to car to car, and that's because the time and parts continuum doesn't always line up. You know, if we have a Venn diagram of the two circles, yeah, we're, we're not, the circles aren't joining right now. So, yeah, we don't have the parts for everything. Taxi's getting its blocks, block machine, the heads are still away for the Lexan. Um, yeah, obviously we've got some stuff to do with Trollbo and we're actually going racing next Friday with the boys at Max Performance so I figure the Mazda's not that far away, the Trollbo's not that far away, hopefully we can get both cars ready to run with the boys at Max Performance at Heathcote Park, it's like a private test day just for the Max Performance boys. So hopefully we can get all that done and go and run 8s with the Mazda and 9s with the Trollbo, so that'll be fun. But I have a list of things that we need to do. We need to remove weight. We need to wire up the two-step. We need to add power and our anti-roll bar. And here is our anti-roll bar from Enemies Racing Australia. As you can see, the packaging alone is amazing, let alone the quality of the components. All made here in Australia, beautifully CNC machined. So the idea is uh, these brackets uh, are attached to either side, either chassis rail inside, and then this bar goes between the brackets. These arms are attached around the bar, and then there's uh, little joins and things that go basically between the arm and the diff. So basically it stops the diff twisting up in the car and that's what's causing the car to go pull that way you can adjust it so that when the car launches it will launch straight and clean and that's what we need we need it to launch straight and clean you know no full twist up off the line just lift straight and clean and it'll go straight down the track and that's what we need and this will help us do it so Bubba and his crew will be uh, installing this for us because this has to be sitting you know on a four poster hoist down on its wheels, you know, to make sure that uh, everything is going to be straight and level. So obviously we can't do that here. But uh, yeah, hopefully they can smash that out in the next week or so, so we can have this car ready to take it out to the track. But in the meantime, we've got a bunch of stuff to do. So like I said, less weight, more power and wire in our two-step. So let's get started. So let's kick things off by removing some weight. And I know what you're all thinking, lose some weight, fat boy. Well, no, that's not going to happen. But we'll start by pulling out uh, the seat, the passenger seat. We don't need it. We're not carrying passengers. So let's rip that out. Come on. Ah, there we go. Right, so we've been down to Bunnings, uh, bought ourselves some electronic scales. So I'll just sit that on there. And it doesn't even register. Ugh. Thirteen point eight kilos, right there. So that's a good start. And the beauty is that it takes so little time to pull in and out that we can actually have the seat in there take the car to the track, whip the seat out, and you know, have the seat come in and out pretty easily. But now, let's move on to the stuff that's not so easy to remove. So the car has full glass in it, you know, for um, the electric windows, but we don't have the electric window controls in there, so basically we've got no way of moving them up and down anyway. Um, so why have them in there? So we'll remove the door trim, which is pretty easy and pretty light. And then we've got all the hardware inside the door. So, oh, it's even got speakers in the door. Yep, they can go. We need screwdriver, screwdriver, and then. Did you see how much crap is under the passenger seat? 
I think we need to get the vacuum in there, lighten it a little bit more. Gotta love this little Ryobi screwdriver, man. It's only four volts, but got great torque. And man, we charge this thing up once a month, maybe, and it just keeps going. I love it. If you haven't got one of these, get one. Hey, there's some glass. It's actually got some weight in it. All right, let's see how much this weighs. Okay, bucket, glass, six kilos exactly. Right, okay, so let's do the other side. Okay, so here's all the driver's side stuff. It might be a little bit lighter because of the no speaker. Yeah, 5.4 kilos on this side. Okay, what's next? It might have only been six kilos, but I tell you, the door feels so much lighter now. It's amazing. All right, so now let's look at the uh, stereo head unit, the airbags, heater. That's gonna be a little bit trickier, but needs to come out because we don't need it where we're going. So our little switch panel here is just uh, that switch activates the trans brake circuit. So right now it does nothing. Flick it up. Oh, actually ignition has to be on as well. But yeah, basically that activates the trans brake circuit. Just so you don't, you can't bump it when you're uh, just cruising around the pits or doing other stuff, you know, on the dyno. You don't want to hit the trans brake on the dyno. Alrighty. Okay. All right. Oh, here we go. Wow, that was a mission. You just got to get the right, right tool in the right spot. That's got to weigh a kilo or more. Cool.
the east. Oh, wow. That's like five kilos. Oh, maybe not, but it, it's heavy. There's weight there. Okay, so what I'd like to do is actually put a quick disconnect wheel on this, but we don't have time for that, certainly not before next Friday. But in the meantime, We'll just remove the driver's side airbag. It's not like there's an airbag sensor in there anyway. So, we'll pull the airbag out. That'll save us a little bit more weight. We're getting pretty close to, yeah, 40 kilos, I reckon. So, 40 kilos is close to 100 pounds, and 100 pounds is a tenth of a second. So, it all counts. Well, there's some weight in that too. There's the other side. Oh, there's the weight. Just like new. Oh, there's some weight in that bucket. Seven and a half kilos. There you go. Nice. Twelve, seventeen, two point seven so far. Alright. So we're just over thirty-two kilos at the moment. And I reckon we've still got a little bit more to go. It gets a little bit harder from now on though. So while we removed the wiper motor some time ago, the wiper arms are still here. And uh, yeah, they don't weigh a lot, but they weigh something. We need all the weight out of it that we can. So it is the next day and we're uh, moving on with our little weight removal program. Uh, we're going to try and pull this dashboard out, which I've got most of it undone. But I think the roll cage might give us some dramas. Um, I'd like to know how they did that, <laughs> but, um, but yeah, I think I've got most of the bolts out. We'll just see what else we're missing and see if we can rotate this whole dashboard out and that way we can get at the heater unit, get that out completely. Once that's done, yeah, I think we're pretty much there. Or well, at least with the weight removal. All right, let's we'll see what we're missing. Okay, so the dash is being a bit of a pain in the butt and I really want to get it out. We are that close to getting it out. I want to get it out so we can get the heater out, lose that weight from the car. But to do it, we're going to have to pull the windscreen. So Roy from Roy's Windscreen is going to duck around this afternoon and pull the screen for us. We'll put it aside, get that dash out and then later, like probably early next week, we'll get the screen put back in when we've got everything sorted. In the meantime though, we're going to do the wastegate spring. So last time we had this on the dyno uh, with a 10 pound spring, we saw about 20 pounds of boost. We want to see a little bit more, so we're going to put a bit more spring in the wastegate. And uh, that's easy enough to do. Just going to have to pop the top. Okay, so this is one of the older Gen 4 wastegates. 
So it has a bolt together top. The newer ones are all got a, like a, a big ring around them that locks it all together. That is the 10 pound spring. So we'll pull that out. Now, I wasn't able to find a 14 pound spring, but I did find a seven pound. They had this in stock, seven pound spring. It's the outer, so we'll put that in there. And then I've got a seven pound inner as well. So we'll put the inner, so combined, we should have 14 pound. Now we'll just put our top on. Push that down, do it up, we should be right to go. This is going to be the fun part. All right, so we've got two in there to start. Now we can do the rest. How easy was that? Quality, Australian-made products, made here, well, like I said, in Australia, in Sydney, and took no time at all to change. So now we'll be able to see more than 20 pounds of boost. Uh, we'll have to send it back to Zane so he can do some fiddling on the dyno and uh, see A, how much boost we've got, and B, stage the boost in like he likes to bring it in nice and gentle because stock bottom end. You don't want those rods breaking because if you just feed it all the boost at once, yep, those rods are going to go bye-bye. But we'll feed it a bit more boost. We'll send it to like 22, 23, maybe 25. Anyway, we'll see where it goes. And um, yeah, this thing should go eight. So we've got Lockie here from Valley Auto Glass. I did say Roy's windscreens before, but it's actually Lockie is Roy's son and there's been business removals and sales and stuff like that so he's going to pop the screen out for us and uh yeah we'll get this bloody dash out get the heater out get some weight out of this car wow look at this two seconds man he's straight into it Easy as. Oh, here we go. Yeah, it's not very heavy, but it all counts. stuff. Alright. Heater. 7.2 kilos. So, 7.2 and the heater and all that junk. Um, it all falls on the floor. So what's that make? With 32.7 that makes 39.9 kilos, so let's say 40 kilos. 40 kilos, we pulled out of the car. That's pretty close to 100 pounds. 100 pounds is a tenth, so let's say a tenth there. Obviously, with more power, she's gonna run quicker as well. And when we've got our anti-roll bar kit, and we'll send that down to Bubba and the crew tomorrow. So, things are happening. All right, time to bolt in the dash, get the windscreen put back in, and she'll be ready for some work tomorrow. Wow, this is so much easier without a windscreen.
So, Lockie has glued the windscreen back in, so that's all good. Uh, we've got to put the bonnet on. We're going to send it off this morning to Bubba and his crew to get the uh, anti-roll bar in. But we've removed 40 kilos from the car, so it's going to be close to a tenth of a second right there. So, pretty happy with that. We're going to uh, put it on the dyno in a day or two, but uh, first we need to get that rear end sorted. So, in typical MX-5 fashion, Every time we ship this thing anywhere outside, it's raining. So, and it is pissing down rain outside. So we're gonna to have to waterproof this thing somehow. <sighs> Fun. Hey guys, Bubba from Ace down here at BSC Performance. Today, we're installing an Enemies Racing Australia anti-roll bar in the MX-5. Wait till you see what this thing goes like with one of these in it. What he said. <laughs> So it's all happening down here at BSC Performance. Bog is back there ticking up our anti-roll bar. So the anti-roll bar, what it's all about is when the left-hand wheel's trying to come up, there's links that rotate off a bar that runs across the chassis rail in front of the diff, and it's basically going to counteract that lifting action. So when it's trying to lift, it's trying to, it transfers those forces back through the anti-roll bar and keeps it all straight. So instead of going up like that, it's gonna come up straight and level and we should get consistent launches and that's what it's all about. If we can get that consistency in the launch, we're gonna get quicker ETs and it's gonna go faster down the track. So yeah, the boys are gonna smash this out real quick and yeah, we'll be on the track in a day or two. So Bogger Bubba and the boys have smashed out this anti-roll bar kit from Enemies Racing Australia. It is Australian made and uh, it is mint. Jamie Farmer and his crew up there in Queensland at Enemies Racing Australia make a quality product. And uh, yeah, it's gone in really good. So this is really going to help our launch. And uh, we've still got to fix some brake lines and stuff like that. But once we get them fixed up, yeah, this thing is going to just hammer. I Really excited about how this is going to launch. So next up, we're on the dyno at max performance, find a little bit more power, and then we go racing. Well, the car is back here in the workshop. Don't ask how it got here. Bubba may have driven it up the east link. But anyway, 
Um, the MX-5 is here. Uh, we put it on the dyno this morning at uh, max performance and unfortunately with the extra boost it ran straight out of injector and there's really no point showing you that. Which means we're going to have to take the springs out, put the old spring back in because we're racing this thing tomorrow regardless. It has less weight, it has an anti-roll bar in it. Let's take it out, see what it runs tomorrow. Uh, we'll have some fun with that and then after we'll come back we'll change the injectors, put more boost into it and see how that goes. So it's gonna be a fun day tomorrow regardless. We're gonna take this up, we'll race this, we'll race the Trolvo. Uh, we'll be up there with the Max Performance crew and they are all racing their own cars as well. So it's gonna be a pretty awesome day and you're gonna see all that on a future episode of Carnage.